H2O, which is so called. We have a name for ourselves since we saw you all. Your steering committee's been very busy since we saw you last, uh, trying to figure out how to make all of this work. We now have subtle, hard, long work to do. And that's why we're glad to see so many of you here, because today we're going to figure out how to get started on the work. Yeah, I just wanted to, I wanted to speak a little bit about why this issue is so important. <laughs> I grew up in this town, but there is one thing that we do know, and that's that our community is growing, and our water supply is not growing. It is a finite resource. And when 30 years has passed, and this little guy here asked me about what was happening in 2008, I want to look him in the eye and tell him that I did everything I could to try and protect his future water supply. The story began at the beginning of June, uh, when I was just looking at uh, the electronic version of the York County Coastal Star, and I came across an article whereby there was a public announcement by our water district that they were considering selling water to Poland Springs. And I said to my wife, there's something wrong with this. Uh, we, we're in, we invited the superintendent to come in and give, give us a sales pitch about uh, how, how he why he felt that the agreement was, was such a great deal for our community. And if I remember, we, we, we stayed in this room for exactly three hours uh, before it really got too late. And um, of all of the questions that were, were presented to him, 99.9% uh, .9 were posed to the idea. I have, have a meeting, There's, they're, they're regularly scheduled a meeting, June 25, in their office down here on on Main Street to review the agreement and to implement or to take a vote and to implement the agreement. Um, they, they were there with the sole purpose of postponing their vote on the agreement until July 30. We formed a steering committee. Uh, the steering committee has been meeting every Monday night um, to develop various courses of action. He's called for an emergency meeting of the Board of Trustees scheduled for this coming Thursday in his office again uh, to, to consider his recommendation for postponement of voting on the agreement. And he's quoted as saying, my approach is to kill it for now, referring <coughs> to the agreement, and that we're going to be uh, what we're going to do in the meantime is continue looking into the pros and cons. End of quote. Now that tells me that he's not done with this yet. At some point here, we're going to pass the hat. Uh, expenses are going to are beginning to mount. Uh, <laughs> checks should be should be made out to. So it'll say Gene Hoffman Campbell written on your treasurer, and then there's, if you want to put a memo on your check, it'll say Soho. You know, we, we just want to be vigilant and intelligent. We don't want to assume that because they're voting to postpone the, the uh, decision that this is, that we've necessarily accomplished what we need to accomplish. But rather, uh, we just want to keep all our uh, options alive. Um, I can uh, provide a set copy of the Are you from the district? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Oh, wonderful. Yes. 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 It's a, oh, it's a, it's a nasty 
chemical. It, it, what it does is it raises the alkalinity of the water so that we can, the aluminum sulfate can uh, make a reaction. It's two very caustic chemicals, but it, it's a conventional treatment plant and it's a proven system and, um, and I, I, I think everyone's uh, confident about the water we treat. But um, I just spoke with Norm a few moments ago and um, because I was concerned, I wanted to, I think what you're doing is great because, I mean, it, if it happens, it has to pass muster. Branch Brook and uh, the Maryland River form the Little River, which flows along Rachel Carson. Uh, if you read the contract by KKW, it states that they're going to be taking surface waters that would otherwise just flow out to the sea. Uh, that water is very important to that ecosystem. Rachel Carson is a very special place to a lot of us. I grew up spending a lot of time out there. Uh, the Branch Brook River in the summer times pretty much goes dry. And um, Trout Unlimited has been working with KKWWD to try and establish stream flow standards so that we can protect natives native fish species and other, and Unlimited actually sent a letter to KKWD, and I have it posted on, we have a website, www.myspace.com, and it's protect under slash branch under slash brook. In short, the message we and representatives from the DEP received was that KKW had no additional water to spare to release downstream into the dewatered section of Branch Brook. If this situation has changed with the purchase of the Wells Barren land, then KKW has an obligation under law to meet stream flow standards in Branch Brook. The sale to Nestle cannot interfere with this legal obligation. My name is Catherine Thorup. I'm the co-founder of the Rangeley Crossroads Coalition, which is an independent citizen action group in Rangeley, which is devoted to working on sustainable growth uh, in the region. It's important to always be saying Nestle waters Poland Spring. Lots of people don't understand that Poland Spring is not a state-owned uh, company that it is a foreign-owned company, uh, part of, um, of Nestle worldwide. LERC decided to allow Nestle Waters Poland Spring to extract up to 184 million gallons of water a year from our region and to send up to 200 tanker passes a day. That's 100 tankers, but you have to always be clear. When they say 100 tankers, there are two passes, one coming in empty and one going out full. So 200 tankers a day, 24-7 to the middle of Rangeley's downtown commercial and residential neighborhoods. That works out to one tanker every seven minutes. That decision, not surprisingly, ran in direct opposition to the expressed wishes of our local community, which was concerned about the possibilities of increased congestion, creating hazardous road conditions on Route 4, coming through the S-curves is already a challenge, and taking jobs away from the residents of Rangeley. Why? Because Rangeley lives off of its tourism, and we were concerned that the number of visitors would decline if truck traffic became too intense. That in turn would reduce room occupancy, lower restaurant receipts, and diminish the income of local store owners. All of those factors would translate into lost jobs. In addition, the infrastructure costs associated with the wear and tear on our roads, occasioned by the constant steam of constant stream of tankers and increased demands on police and emergency services. We had one of the tankers overturn in the S-curves just shortly after they began uh, their operations. Uh, increased demands on police and emergency services would raise the tax burden on the region's residents. Most critical of all, most critical of all, this precious natural resource would be removed from our region forever. Who are paying for the, for the water that they're extracting? Not in range. Six tenths. Not a penny? From here. Not range. I mean, I know that they want to buy water from your water district. Yes, exactly. So they're just getting blurs that just gave them this. Water. Right. Oh, There's no money for, for a bunch of for a fire truck. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing. So I mean, that, that was not a misunderstanding. No, 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 nothing. I mean, I mean, I tell you, I'll tell you one thing. People in Range Lake, when they read that you guys down here were going to be paid for your water, they're like, uh, hello. <laughs> and trust me, there are big law firms out there. They are the kind of firms that represent the Nestle's of the world. Yeah. What do we have that can go up against these megalo law firms? I mean, it, and, and they have bottomless supplies of money to hire these law firms to, you know, tie people up in, in court and to just out-lawyer you. 
I have submitted a bill titled An Act to Protect Maine's Groundwater. I have been urged by many of you to ensure that the language that follows that title is the Vermont model. And the Secretary of State told me, we've got laws, they've been in effect for 350 years. I said, excuse me, Mr. Secretary of State, but we know more about water and its limited resource availability today than we did 350 years ago. Something has to change.